Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this screencast, I will show you how to get started with some of the project coin features incorporated in JDK 7 and available now in NetBeans IDE 7.0 beta. In order to get started, go to openjdk.org page, click on 7 link right next to bundles. You can download the binary bundles by scrolling down the page and clicking on please go here link. Click here. And you can see that there are different binary bundles that are available for different platforms. This screencast is being recorded on a Windows box. Click on this link, download the exe, execute it, and then you have your JDK environment just set correctly. In order to get started with NetBeans, go to netbeans.org, click on NetBeans IDE 7.0 beta link right here. And then you can scroll down, click on the down, download NetBeans link. And download any of the Java flavors, be it Java SE, Java, or all. Download it. When you install NetBeans, use the JDK 7 that has been just downloaded and installed. Or if you have NetBeans 7.0 beta, then you can always go to NetBeans, click on Tools, click on Java Platforms, and here I have already installed JDK 1.7. Otherwise, you can click on Add Platform, go to Program Files Java and use the appropriate JDK directory and install it over here. So that's the easy way to get started. After that, what I've done is I've created a new project over here. In this new project, um, I have to make sure during the project creation, I am specify JDK 7 as a source and binary format because that's what will enable project coin features for this Java application. Okay, with that, let's get started and take a look at the different project coin features that have been supported now in um, NetBeans IDE 7.0 beta. Um, so let's get going. Um, this is a simple application, just one uh, class file. And um, I got two um, uh, numbers declared over here, uh, public static int, public static int. One is called as binary, one is called as color. Uh, this is apparently a binary number. This is a hexadecimal number, you know, it's a color code. Um, let me comment the lines over here, or actually uncomment the lines. And then let's run this code. Now if I run this code, I will show you the output. It shows me the output as 255 and shows me a big integer number. Now this um, number makes sense, these uh, integers make sense, but uh, one of the new improvements that have been done in JDK 7 is the ability to introduce underscores within the number itself. So now I have introduced underscores in numbers. Um, that makes the code a little bit verbose, but it's much more readable and much more apparent. Uh, just by looking at it, I can see what RGB color code it is. And then here I can see what all the different bits are looking like. So now um, let me run my code again. And there you go. You see the exact same um, output from your um, IDE. So that's the first um, project coin feature that I have demonstrated. Let's look at our next feature, which is a uh, uh, switch uh, statements uh, that can be now based on string. So let me uh, comment this code over here and uncomment these three lines here. Now if I click on these lines here, it will show me what the method looks like. Here it says, you know, it uh, just takes a string parameter and I got a bunch of if else and then I just print out some statements over here. So let me run the code first. Um, this is what the output looks like and if I go back and see how the method is being invoked I pass a fruit a vegetable and then I pass tomato um, and the output is being printed over here it says apple apple looks good vegetable is being printed over here and then if it's an unknown fruit or vegetable it asks a question back okay so now notice the cool thing over here is NetBeans IDE shows me a hint it says convert to switch statement so right click on the bubble convert to switch over strings. Now this is a new feature in JDK 7, one of the project coin features. So I do that and NetBeans automatically uh, do everything for me and convert this bunch of nested if else's to a switch statement. So it says um, switch on food, case apple, case banana, and notice how ors, you know we were doing having a, if food is peas or food is carrot, that is being converted to a double case here. And then of course we have a default as well. 
So let's run the code one more time and see everything works as expected. Okay, perfect. So that's our second feature that we just demonstrated. And then let's try some other feature now. The next feature that I will highlight is the improved type inference for generics. For that, go back up in the code, comment these lines, uncomment our next method, jump to that method. And in this method, you can see um, it's called a diamond operator for a reason. And I'll explain that. It's a list of string, map of integer to string, initialize as array list and hash map, add a couple of elements to the list, print out the list, add a few elements to the map, and print out the map. Let's run this element, uh, run this code first. Well, our list and our map is printed appropriately. So that's cool. Uh, now, uh, um, the new feature that has been added in Project Coin is the ability to derive the type on the right hand side from the left hand side so there is no need to say string over here or all the types over here as well so that's exactly what NetBeans IDE is showing us as a hint I click here it says use diamond inference and notice how my string is gone over here similarly I do the diamond inference here too and my types are gone here the idea is these types are automatically derived from the left hand side now let's run our code one more time and see everything works as is. So that's cool. You know, we are uh, pretty good in that. Um, let's try another feature now. And this feature is called as uh, multi-catch or automatic resource management. For that, we go back up again, comment this method, uncomment this one. Um, let's fix the exception here first, and then I'll talk about it later. Okay, throws IO exception. This is being added here. Go to this method. Now in here, you can see I have a file input stream. Then I initialize it, you know, basically reading this very source file itself. I read it and then I print it out of the console. Couple of catch blocks. And then the, finally, I'm closing the stream. And the throws IO exception is because of in.close over here. And that's what is being catched in our uh, main block as well. Okay. Now, um, the first thing I want to highlight here is um, these two catch blocks have similar execution code. And that's why I got a bulb over here. It says can be replaced with multi-catch. So instead of just specifying one exception over here, you can specify multiple exceptions over here. Let's use that hint. And so my code becomes terse now. You know, it says um, final and I'll put the two exceptions over here and they're doing the same thing. Now, another thing is instead of explicitly cleaning up my resources, um, I want the JDK runtime to take care of uh, automatic resource management for me, my resource being a file input stream. That's my next hint. It says convert to automatic resource management. Take that link and my finally block is gone. I know, so what happens is anytime the resource gets out of scope, runtime automatically takes care of it. So let's run the code here. And so the expected behavior is, you know, this reads the source file and basically dumps it out on the console. So um, in this uh, short screencast, I've highlighted um, several features of Project Coin that are available in NetBeans IDE 7.0 beta. Um, we encourage you to download JDK 7 builds from openjdk.org. Um, keep trying them in NetBeans IDE 7.0 beta and give us feedback. Thank you.